What's up guys, Mike here. And today we're gonna to talk about onset terms, vernacular, vocabulary, things that you're gonna hear that will help you feel a little less lost when you show up on set. Uh, yeah, uh, Mike. Trying to do a video. I know, I know, but I need you to take a yeah. baby, hang it upside down, uh -huh. put a squeeze uh -huh. on it, and knock it down. Okay, uh, can, can you give me like five minutes? Okay. I'm, I'm doing a thing. Ah, uh, yes, yes, I can, <sighs> I can wait. Let's get to it. All right, if you have any idea what I was just asked to rig, let me know in the comments down below and I'll let you know if you're right. Now, when you go to a film set or TV set or production of any kind, you're gonna hear very weird things spoken to different departments and different folks. Now, this isn't someone just trying to mess with you. You haven't knocked your head or anything like that. People just call things very strange things in video production. It's just, it's just the nature of the business. It's kind of fun, but also it can be a little weird because, you know, hanging a baby upside down can maybe catch somebody just a little off guard. So what we're gonna do here is give you just a quick little reference of video production terms that you're most likely to hear so that you can have an idea of just what's being talked about. So the very first thing is a call sheet. Now, th this one's pretty basic, but what a call sheet is, is it gives you a full schedule for the day. It also gives you locations for the actual location of the shoot, locations for hospitals, phone numbers to reach people, everybody in the department, their contact information, and also call times for each department so everybody knows when they need to be on set. Sometimes you'll see a general call time, but you may also want to be sure that you or your department doesn't have an earlier call time. More often than not, crew will be there way before other members of the team. So always check the call sheet, read it from top to bottom, and just make sure you know where you need to be, that you know the address, and you have a couple phone numbers of people you can reach if you either get stuck in traffic, get lost, or if you just need to ask for a little bit of help getting directions. All right, another thing that you'll hear is people over their headsets saying walkie check. Now, this isn't you know someone asking you to write a check for your walkie. This is purely just a calm check. This could be someone that just turned on a brand new battery or they just got on headset for the first time and they're just going walkie check. Then someone on the other line would say, you know, good check, go check, or um, good, or we got you things like that, just to let you know that they have been heard and that their walkie is on the correct frequency or that they're at the very least on the same line as somebody else. And they can find out if they're on the main party line, which is another term for the main line, everybody is on there. Typically you'll have different channels for different departments. PAs will typically be on one channel all day, different crew will be on another. And then there's one main open line, usually for producers or other people in production that are just listening in to everybody's comms all day just to get a general feel on how everybody's doing. So if you ever hear somebody call walkie check, they're just checking to see to make sure that their walkie is actually working. Copy. Copy is just a very old school way to just say yes or affirmative or just that you understand. But more importantly, copy is a way to respond to someone to say, yes, I understand. So if somebody asks you to go rig a light and you say copy, what you're telling them is, I hear you, I know what you need, I'm gonna go do it. If you don't know and you need them to clarify, this is the time to ask. Typically someone will ask you this over headset or even face to face. So if somebody is saying, hey, I need you to go get a two by three out of the truck, and then I need you to bring it back with a shop bag because we need another bag here for the C stand. Now, it would be up to you to say, yes, I understand, or copy, and then go do it. But if you don't know, you could say, I don't know where the two by threes are in the truck. And they will then relay information to you, whether they can send another PA or a grip, or someone else can tell you where that item may be. So copy, don't say it unless you fully understand. The last thing anybody wants is to have to redo someone else's work because 
they just didn't understand. No one is gonna give you crap if you don't know how to do something and you say so. The worst thing that you could do for yourself and for your team is to pretend like you know something when you don't. You'll find a lot of people in the film and TV industry are more than willing to teach you if they can, or at the very least, you can observe and do some OTJ or on the job training and just say, hey, I don't know how to rig that. Can you show me? I've never done that before. That's okay. But if you know how to do it, say, copy, I got it, and then get to it. All right, the next one is 10-1. This is very important. This is when you need to go pee. <laughs> it's a very discreet way to tell other people on production that you need to take a break, that you need to go to the bathroom. And 10-1 for going number one. Um, this is a way so you don't have to just say publicly in front of a client or talent that saying, hey, I'm going to go pee. Instead, you could say, hey, 10-1. And then someone will say over headset, copy 10-1. And they'll know that you're going to be going to the bathroom. That way, if someone's looking for you, they could say, hey, where's Mike? Oh, 10-1. Oh, okay, cool. That way they can have a rough idea of where you are and when you're going to be back. And this leads us to our second one, 10-2. 10-2 is uh, it's when you need to take a poopy. <laughs> Similar to 10-1, this is just a nicer way of saying that you need to go to the bathroom and that you need to go number two, meaning you're probably going to take a little bit more time than 10-1. So again, this is just a nicer way of saying and informing someone that you're going to be going to the bathroom. All right, martini. Now, there may be chances when you're on productions when there might be drinks or beers or something to celebrate after a long day, but martini isn't just code for, all right, cool, let's get hammered. No, no, no. Martini is the uh, AD giving the call for this is the last shot of the day. This is the martini shot. It's kind of a, an old callback to like, all right, cool, when we're done, it's time to go have happy hour because the day is done. This is the last shot. Let's get it. So if you ever hear someone calling, hey, martini next, it's letting everybody know that this is gonna be the last shot of the day. And after that, we'll be shot out. So when you hear martini, last shot of the day. It's a good thing to hear, especially when it's been a very long day. All right, another thing that you may hear early in your career is clear the frame. This is a very kind way of saying, hey, you're in the shot. Always be mindful of where the lenses are pointing because the last place you wanna be is in the shot when everybody is about to roll. So if you ever hear someone clear frame, this is a kind way of letting everybody know, hey, hair and makeup, PAs, grips, everybody, ACs, get out. We are ready to roll, clear frame. All right, this one, similar to Martini, is called the Abbey or the Abbey Singer. This is the second to last shot of the day. So if you ever hear someone saying, all right, next shot is Abby, or next shot is Abby Singer, this is letting you know that you're reaching the end of the day. So you have only this one and then Martini, and you're good to go. So if you ever hear someone call out on the call sheet, hey, next shot, Abby, you know, you're almost there. Hot set. Now, if you ever hear someone call hot set, it means everything has been placed on set. Don't touch it. This means props are in place, talent is in place, that it needs to stay this way because of continuity and there's gonna be a lot of angle changes and things should not be messed with. This is very important. If you ever hear hot set called, don't touch a thing unless you are told to. <laughs> then go touch it and adjust it. But do your best to not mess with anything on set because the last thing you wanna do is piss somebody off because you just totally screwed up continuity and they need to restart the whole blocking process. That would suck. <laughs> All right, the next one is stinger. This is just another term for an extension cord. Nothing fancy here, but it is a term that I heard very early on and was pretty confused by. I was like, is this like a whip? What's a stinger? And it's just it's just a power cord. That's all it is. It's just, it's just a power cord. It's just what it's called. All right, another weird one as well is a C-47. Now, I'm a World War II buff. My first thought when I heard a C-47 is an airplane for paratroopers. 
because I, I loved Band of Brothers. So, but when I hear C-47, it's like, why, are, why is there an airplane on set? It's not that, it is a simple wooden clothesline pin or clothes pin. And people will use C-47s to clamp diffusion or gels to barn doors on lights, or even just to pin some clothing back on a talent so that way their clothes maybe feel a little bit tighter, maybe it's a little baggy, or you can maybe attach them to other people's clothes if you wanna, you know, mess with an intern or something like that. All right, another term you could hear on set is striking. Striking is a term you will hear when you are about to ignite a light for the first time. So this could be a light that has just been plugged in and you're just notifying crew and talent, don't look in my direction. There is about to be a very bright light in your face. It's just, it's just, a, it's just a nice thing to do. Now, this isn't meaning you're gonna like smack it or beat it with a stick. This is just letting somebody know that the light is gonna turn on and it's gonna be bright. You probably don't wanna look at it. So it's just a nice courtesy to let everyone know. All right, another term is room tone. Room tone is typically a call out you'll hear from the audio department or the A1 or the A2. This is typically when a recording is gonna be made of just the room. No one's speaking just how the room sounds. The reason for this is when you're editing and doing things in post-production, if you need to fill in a gap because you're maybe trimming somebody's dialogue a little bit to maybe sound them a little bit more fluid and a little more intelligent and put together, um, you may need to put a little bit of just room sound in between the cuts to make it sound seamless, that it sounds like it's from the same room and the audio just doesn't just drop every time you cut to just make things sound just a little bit better. Back to one. Back to one is a very quick call out. Usually you'll hear this from the AD or even the director letting you know that it's time to reset to our first position. This is to notify talent, crew, and anybody that could be moving or there could be any changes in the scene. It could be a long take. This lets everybody know that you're gonna get ready to start back from first position and you're gonna go again. You'll hear this when there's a lot of movement or that it could be just a really long take and it's time to reset and go again. Another reason you can have a call out for back to one is maybe you're only using a single camera and you need to get a second angle. Back to one lets everybody get back to first position and now allows for an alternate angle for a slightly different take. Slate and clapper. A slate or a clapper board is used for a variety of purposes. It can be used to sync audio across multiple different devices, whether those are on camera audio devices that aren't sunk through timecode, or it could be syncing with a dual system recording option where you're recording on the camera, but you're also recording audio somewhere else to help sync up in post. There will also be helpful info in the front, such as the name of the production, the director, the camera, is it inside or outside, what take, what role, all that good stuff. This is all to help with in post and help with syncing. Video Village. Video Village is where you'll typically find your directors, your producers, hair and makeup when production is rolling. This is where they can see all the different camera angles with monitors and uh, color scopes and being able to see how things are looking throughout the shot. This is something as simple as a singular monitor tucked away in the corner, or it can be a full tent with, you know, 10 to 15 different camera angles and multiple different producers and line producers taking notes and making sure that everything gets hit and nothing gets missed. This is where you'll find where most of the higher ups involved in production most likely will be congregating and living in Video Village. It's also the best way to get a quick look at how all different shots are shaping. So let's say you're lighting or rigging and helping out with the scene. If you're on your way back and you're able to just walk by Video Village, it's a quick way to see how everything is shaping up. It's kind of fun to see how things are looking. 
Alrighty guys, those are some of the onset terms that I think will help you feel just a little bit less lost and I hope you found it helpful. If you liked the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and share it with somebody that you think might enjoy it or benefit from it. And if you enjoyed content like this, feel free to subscribe. We do post a video every single week about filmmaking, storytelling, content creation, and everything in between. And if you have any questions about some of the stuff that we discussed, or you just want to talk about it some more, you can leave a comment down below. We also stream on Twitch three nights a week. You can find links to that in the description down below. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video.